guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. Uh, before we get started, I just want to share a picture that a viewer had sent me, uh, Brandon. Uh, he said that this channel helped him uh, kind of learn a few steps to get into making a knife and he sent me a picture of his very first knife and I gotta say it looks really good uh, for any knife and especially for your first knife, Brandon. Nice work. So I just want to say one of the things that if this channel has helped you out at all and uh, you've maybe learned something about knife making and you'd like me to sh maybe share with some of the viewers knives that you've made, just email me. Jeremy at homesteadknives.com and uh, maybe it's a little thing I'll put into these Tool Time Tuesdays I can do some viewer knives and you guys can kind of share some of the products some of the things that you've worked on your first knife or maybe your second knife your hundredth knife just to kind of broaden this whole sense of community that we have as knife makers and makers so thanks for that Brandon so for this week's Tool Time Tuesday it's not necessarily so much of a tool review um, more of an unboxing one second Milwaukee cold cutting chop saw for steel. As if. All right, so what do we have here? This is the Makita LC1230, and it's a cold cutting metal chop saw. So this is for steel, it's not designed for wood, and it's got a carbide tipped blade. Let's see if we can get a close up of the blade there. See the carbide teeth there? I believe this one's a 60 tooth, 12 inch blade. And these run a lot slower than your abrasive wheel chop saws. Uh, this one I believe runs at 1300 RPM, where those abrasive chop saws, typically they run about 3470 in that area. Big benefit to using these is that they're quieter, uh, they don't sh send sparks everywhere, and they cut way cooler. Uh, your part is actually cool to the touch once it's cut, and no burrs on it. Well. I shouldn't say that. Everything I've read said the very little burrs. Uh, those abrasive saws, you have to touch them up with a grinder every time because uh, they got nasty burrs on them. This is supposed to really help that. The biggest reason I bought this was for making my aluminum sanding blocks. I've been cutting these in my bandsaw, my porta band, and it's kind of a pain in the butt because, well, first of all, you have to mark everyone out, but also with aluminum and the rollers that guide the, the blade on that saw, they kind of jam up and gum up and then it gets tight and those breaking blades um, and it's just it's not as efficient so the plan is I'm hoping this thing should be able to cut the aluminum very quickly and uh, can get a lot more precise cuts now these teeth are different than say an aluminum cutting tooth that you can get for like a wood chop saw a big difference is in the rake which is the angle that the tooth goes down at um, but I've seen a lot of guys that use these and they say they work fantastic I was going between the Makita and the DeWalt. I believe the DeWalt part number I was looking at was an DW872. And the reason I went with the 12 inch Makita over the 14 inch DeWalt is that uh, the people at Calgary Fasteners where I bought this said it's way easier to come by the steel blades in 12 inch. Um, they're a little less expensive and than the 14 inch for the DeWalt. So also one thing I really like about the Makita is obviously all of them have this quick release for the, the threaded portion of the clamp. So when it's in this position, you can slide it in and out. But one thing I really like about the Makita is that this wheel and how quickly it swivels. So engage your threads there, and then to do your final lockup, you just crank it with this hand knob, and that works really, really quick. I think that is gonna be a really awesome feature. Also, the blade change on this, uh, sorry, your angle of cut change, uh, to change this rest, it goes 45 one direction only, so it's not a compound miter saw, just a miter saw, but you can do uh, the 45s. I was looking at the Princess Auto option, and that's a straight cut only. I don't know why you'd spend any money on a saw that only cuts straight, especially for metal and fabrication like that. I mean, come on. I'll show you a couple other features. Obviously, like most of them, they have the full guarding that covers the blade uh, when it's in the up position, and then there's a little lever mechanism that opens it as you come down. 
keeps it safe. This one has a little chip box and it's supposed to catch all your chips as you're cutting them. I'm not sure how effective this will be, but we'll check it out. And then you've got a storage for your wrench, uh, for changing your blades, your spring. This is your depth of cut stop. This little, th this little bolt right here, you go in and out to adjust that. And one thing I really like about this one is it's got a fairly heavy base, some type of a cast steel or something. Uh, rather than just the cheap uh, tin sheet metal ones that a lot of the abrasive saws have, uh, those things don't last that long and they warp on you. So hoping this should be a lot more sturdy. I'm probably gonna actually make a little base for this and mount it somewhere in the shop here permanently. My thoughts are that, you know, without sparks flying everywhere, I could hook up a suction port for my vacuum here and it should be fairly clean in here. And this would be something super handy that, you know, anytime you need to cut a piece of steel, it's just chop, chop and you're done. So my other abrasive saw is something that I leave in storage. When I have stuff to cut, I get it out, I use it outside and it's kind of a pain in the butt that way. I'm hoping I can find a spot for this uh, and leave it permanently set up. Having said that, I've got very little space left in this here shipping container shop. I guess once my belt grinder's gone, that'll be a little bit more room. Also, you see a few parts there from my belt grinder project. That's coming along. I'm filming it. Hopefully, I'll have that video ready in a couple of weeks. So let's take this outside and try some test cuts. All right, guys. So a little change of plans. I made a little room in here. I'm not sure if this is going to be where it's mounted for good, but... Uh, instead of shooting this outside, I'm going to do it inside here. And uh, this here is a piece of 3 8 uh, pardon me, half inch by inch and a half inch uh, bar stock, just mild steel. Uh, very first cut, never used this saw before, so let's see what she does. whatsoever when they say this is a cold cutting saw it's actually not even warm and uh, look at the finish on there that's a pretty impressive finish but I can't believe it. slightest little bit of a burr uh, you know if I was just welding this piece I don't even think that would affect my weld at all I'll probably still hit it but certainly not even enough to cut myself on you can just feel it there one pass with a file and that thing's gonna be cleaned up I know they call these cold cut saws, but I didn't think it was that cold. That's impressive. Uh, let's try a piece of angle iron now. All right, so this piece of uh, quarter inch, this is rusty, but this is quarter inch thick angle iron, inch and a half by inch and a half. Let's see how it does with this. Is insane I cannot believe how well that cuts and literally it's cold to the touch all right so it's a piece of stainless steel pipe uh, not sure what the wall thickness is on there The main reason I bought this, cutting aluminum. Let's see how it does with this. Now, I've heard on certain forums that you avoid the warranty if you cut aluminum with this, so if that's true, I guess I'm just about to avoid the warranty, but 
I, I know with the rake angle of the teeth, that might affect the chips and, and how they release, but I'm thinking it should cut this all right, so let's take a look. It actually leaves a bit more of a burr than it does with steel. Let's see if we have any loading. And you can see there's still some of the aluminum stuck in the teeth, and I think that might be the reason why they would say it voids the warranty, but wow, that's that's amazing. This tool is really, really cool. Alright guys, so there's a quick look at the Makita LC1230 cold cut chop saw for metal. Now, full disclosure, I don't get paid anything from this. Makita doesn't know I'm making this video and I bought this with my own money. So what I'm telling you is just straight up from a guy who bought this tool. Um, really like this. Uh, these typically run two to three times more than the abrasive wheel chop saws. In the US, they have a few models at Home Depot. I forget the brand name. It's kind of a knockoff brand or something, but uh, one model is like under $200, I believe, and the other one is about three to 400. I've heard bad things about the cheap one, but fairly decent reviews on the more expensive version of that tool. In Canada, I think the cheapest you could get into a cold cut chop saw is from Princess Auto, and those are $400. The bummer with that one is that it does not do miter cuts, so I just thought, man, 90 degree cuts only, that's kind of useless. For the extra money that it would have taken them to design some type of a miter function in there, um, I really think they missed the mark on that. That's why I didn't go with the Princess Auto version. Um, the DeWalt uh, is about $150 more than this one. This one was $600 and yeah, you know what? I, in the long run, I, this is certainly gonna be worth it. The blades will last much longer. As soon as you cut your part, you can get to work on it and you're not waiting, you don't have to deburr it. It's gonna save you time and a lot less dust too. If you're inside your garage or you know, working at a shop. Uh, for me in here, if I wanna be cutting inside, dust is always an issue because I don't like having a lot of dust everywhere and then go do some fine assembly work or something. So having said that, I guess having a belt grinder in the same room kinda negates that whole concept. But anyways, very nice little option. Amazed at how cool the parts are as soon as you cut them. Like literally, they're not even warm, they're cool. So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, all in all, I'm really happy I purchased it. I'm excited to put some uh, good hard use on it right away here. And uh, hope this gives you something to look at if you're considering buying one of these. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Tool Time Tuesday. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.